All right, Barbarian. This is a film that, I mean, it didn't come out of nowhere because we definitely saw the trailer mm -hmm. a bunch, but I don't know. There wasn't a lot of hypes uh, around this movie, probably because it's an original property, right? Yeah. It's not attached to the Halloween franchise or, you know, is some undisclosed freaking out of nowhere prequel to X or, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, whatever, um, which is great. And uh, we heard a lot of early buzz, like, when I say early, I mean, like, in the last couple of days. Yes. Like, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, everyone is just, I think that's what it really is, out of nowhere for me, is like, I knew this film was coming out. I didn't know exactly what to expect because I was basically ignoring the trailers because I don't like spoilers. Mm -hmm. And I had a feeling that this trailer was going to have some spoilers in it. Um, and then I started seeing people who got to see it a little early, a day or two early, talking about like, oh my God, this is so amazing. <laughs> and I was like, oh wow, this is shocking to me that this film uh, is being so loved right now. So, that, okay. I'll say this. I do think this is going to be a divisive film. Um, currently, it isn't. Currently, if you go on IMDb, the critics are real high on it, and the user scores are pretty high on it. But I haven't checked it tonight, because more people have seen it by now for sure, because this is the first day that it's available. I'll be curious, but I have a feeling this is going to be a divisive film. Mm -hmm. um, as far as what this movie's about, uh, all I'll give you is, is what the first like 30 seconds of the trailer is, which is what I saw. Um, a girl comes to an Airbnb in the middle of the night. It's raining out. She goes up to the door. Uh, she can't get in. She finds out that someone is staying in her Airbnb, and they decide to spend the night together uh, because of their bad situation that they both were booked and of course she's um, you know cautious about him and and mm -hmm. uh, you know, upon further investigation uh, into this house things go awry <laughs> that's that's about it they I mean I don't know how else you can talk about this film without spoiling it yeah uh, we'll go with you what do you think um, I mean, we talked about it a little in our car ride home. Mm -hmm. I liked the movie quite a bit. I wanted more... I was expecting more gore because of how everybody was hyping it to be, like, ultra-violent. And it wasn't as gory as I wanted. But I always think that we like more than maybe typical people do. For what we did get, I liked what I saw. Um, I was a big fan of like the atmosphere and the cinematography. I think there's some really cool shots and like camera work with like point of view and perspective that I was really into. And I think that the the music is very ominous and it fits really well and kind of gets you into this uh, tense and like suspenseful vibe pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I also. I mean, yeah, I don't want to... You can't really give... I can't give a lot because I don't want to give... We're going to talk spoilers, spoilers after. But I, I enjoyed I want, the I movie. would like to. I think that, you know, like, I'm sure you'll probably talk about this, but there's, you know, a couple moments in the film that I think if you go too deep into them, like, they don't make sense logically, and it kind of ruins maybe what the intention is for those scenes. So I, I think that you can't really overthink it when it comes to that. Um... But, I don't know. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time watching it. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, as I told her, uh, overall, if I take the whole film, I like more than I didn't. And so, it's a positive. I definitely think people should check it out. I definitely think people will love it. And I think people will hate it. Right? I do think it's going to be a divisive film. So, you should go and you should see. It's a coin flip. Um, and that's the case with any film, but I, I just, I have a feeling this one's going to be a little bit more divisive and that's okay. Uh, I like films that kind of try to, uh, push the limits and, and do different things and whatnot. Whatever they tried new in this or, or whatever, whenever they tried to subvert expectations in this and that, I was appreciative of that. There was a moment where I actually like, uh, quietly clapped 
because I was like, oh, cool. Definitely didn't see that coming. Mm. That's nice. Um, but I can see that pissing some people off, sure. right? Because they want things to go a certain way or they're not used to that kind of thing or whatever. But fine. Yes. As Kaylee said, we're not great gauges of certain things. Uh, namely, violence, gore, and what we consider to be like messed up. A messed <laughs> up situation. Like, when it comes to this film, gore, violence, on a scale of 1 to 10, for me, a 4, 5 maybe at best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This isn't an overly graphic film by any means. Like yeah. there's, uh, there's very little, honestly, when it comes to actual like brutality and gore and violence, I just didn't see that much. It, there's mm. anyway. And as far as like it being screwed up, um, the situation and all that, let's say a seven, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, but this is a guy, this is coming from a guy who's watched a Serbian film like a few times. This is coming from a guy who's seen like every like extreme film. And like, so I guess when I'm, I don't know, uh, desensitized because of those types of things, but even like a film like the evil dead remake yeah. is way more violent than this movie. Yeah. Way more violent. Yeah. So, and that's rated R, and that's a mainstream film, I think right? That this... I mean, Rambo. Yes. The fourth Rambo movie is a hundred times more violent than this film. Yes, it is. Right? I think that people, you know, like with this um, film, the scenario in which the violence is taking place is more disturbing to them than maybe a war film would be. And so I think that in their mind, they're kind of filling in, like, what happened before, what could happen next, sure. and sort of, like, you know, their imagination is doing a lot of the work for them, which is a good technique, I think, of filmmakers to use, you know, to get your audience so freaked out that they're just, like, remembering way more gore than there actually is. Sure. Um, which we've talked about a few times. But I think that if you're, like, used to watching really violent, gory horror movies, that this isn't going to be, like, outrageous at all. Especially, like, I mean, if you've seen, like, Hatchet or, you know, like like you said, the Evil Dead remake, those kinds of movies are much more gory. But this film, for me at least, had a really great, like I said, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that the gore that we do get is well done for the story, you know. Yeah. I definitely wasn't impressed with any kill or any, mm -hmm. like, gore or anything in this film. I, I didn't see anything to write home about. Um, I agree with her, so I don't want it to sound like I dislike the movie because I think that's how people might take this. Um, I did. I, I liked the cinematography. I liked the atmosphere that it created. It, it creates a good sense of, uh, distrust and, um, you are kind of on your toes about like what's going to happen. And then when it reveals like what's happening, you're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That was unexpected. Um, honestly, though, like from there, I, I don't, I don't know exactly what I would have wanted. But like when they finally reveal what's happening, I was like, "Oh man, we're gonna go really wild here," and then it just like cuts to a completely different story, mm -hmm. basically, and we spend probably twenty twenty five minutes away from that again setting up something mm. and you're like C can we get back there because like i want to be with that yeah right so that that kind of took me out of it a little bit because i was just like all right i guess we're doing this now and there's a there's there's definitely a good amount of comedy but i also felt like there was some unintentional comedy um and i pointed out the scenes and we'll talk about it in the spoiler part um Another thing is is unbelievable character moments, um, whether it be uh, the main female lead who makes a ridiculous decision, in my opinion, uh, the way cops act in this. I rolled my eyes. I, I, I no. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the spoiler part. Um, so yeah, I just 
there was a lot of stuff in here that took me out of the film. And it kept taking me out of the film because I just had too many questions. Mm -hmm. And when we talk spoilers here in a minute, I'll definitely get into some of them. Not all of them because I don't want to sit here for an hour. Um, But it, it was a good film that was hurt by expectations a little bit because people are just like, oh my God, this is like the best film of the year. I definitely, this is not my favorite film of, of 2022 and definitely not. Um, but I didn't quite like it. Um, where it would sit in my ranking of the year, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But I don't, it wouldn't, I wouldn't make my top five or ten off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, I think I want to bring people's expectations of this film down a bit. But I do still think it's a cool film that has cool parts and unique situations um, even though the beginning of this movie feels very similar to Gone in the Night with Winona Ryder, um, it plays out much differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the setup is very similar. Um, but I do. I like the tension. I like, you know, this reminded me of Us a little bit in the sense that, like, I was liking what was going on. But as soon as I started to question anything, I really started to struggle. And I started to be like, okay, well, why did that happen? And why wouldn't they do this? And and that's frustrating. Yeah. I don't like that. Um, so I think my biggest issues with the film, and I, I think that the way you're going to enjoy this film most is to just accept what's happening. Mm-hmm. Just go along for the ride and accept everything that's happening is happening. And that's that. Yeah. Right? But... People have a really hard time getting past, like, people doing dumb things. And that one, I I don't know how many people are going to be able to just be like, oh, okay, she's doing that. That's dumb. Oh, well. Right? So, okay. Anyway, we'll get into spoilers here. Uh, I 100% think you should see the film. Go out, Mm -hmm. support it. It's a good film. Yeah. I just have have my issues with it. I definitely have my issues with it and I would much rather have just outright loved it like mm-hmm. like a lot of people are and just come here and gloat about it, you know, uh, just sing my praises, but that's not that's not what happened, so <laughs> I'm not going to pretend it is. Um, so spoiler talk. So if you haven't seen the movie, time to leave. Go see the movie. Come back if you want. <laughs> if you don't, that's okay too. Um, so, all right. Um... As far as my issues go, and I already said all of this with Takele before, but like her decision to go down into the basement after he's disappeared, after she, and, and I was telling Kaylee, I mean, I, I got really like passionate about this when I was talking about it, but it's like, she's in a unknown location. She's in an unknown house with an unknown man in an unknown basement in an unknown uh, secret room mm-hmm. in an unknown tunnel within that secret room. Mm-hmm. This is like six unknowns removed from her comfort level. Yeah. And she's going to choose to go down there without contacting the police first, even though like, yeah, she called and they were like, well, we don't have any units in the area. You're calling again. You're calling friends. You're calling somebody to be like, here's where I'm at. Sure. If anything goes wrong, you need to send people here. If I don't call you back in 10 minutes, you need to call the police. Get them here. I don't care what you have to say. Call a fucking bomb threat in. I don't care. She's not going to just walk down there with no weapon, scared out of her mind like that, because she has a crush on a guy that she met five minutes ago, knows nothing about, and would the whole time be thinking, he could be setting me up. He could be just be luring me down here right now. She's not going to make yeah. a single phone call. She's not going to like, no, there's but, just you know, no as way. As unbelievable as that is, and I agree with you, I think that she's super cautious, you know, in the beginning of the film. I think that, and this is an explanation that I know you're going to hate, but I think that it applies here. She's overwhelmed and scared in that moment. So I don't think that she's thinking as rationally as she was earlier you know when she's first entering the house and seeing this stranger what's the first and thing you do i also think when you are like frightened out of your mind and you think somebody's hurt 
I mean, sure, you should call the police. You call the police. Yeah. Everybody but I think would. that it, it speaks to her character because later on in the film, like, she does have a heroic, uh, like, personality. Like, she sure. wants to help people. But it's, so I do think that she's meaning well and is just she's not thinking well, clearly but in that moment. But it's dumb. Like I agree, but I just think like, that it's what good. Not what help is she to him? Like if you okay, let's say that situation was the same, mm-hmm. and you came down into the tunnels after me, and when you found me, I would be like, "Oh my god, okay, we need to get upstairs." Like the police are on their way, right? And you're like, "Oh, I haven't called them," and I'd be like, "You haven't called the police? Why haven't you called the police?" I'd be furious with you i know but i just think that you know it's easy for like and again it's just an explanation from a movie watching standpoint but like that's not in that situation though you could definitely be so freaked out that you're just not thinking about it it's not good you know no i disagree i I know that it's not like a great explanation i'm just saying for the context of the film i think that's kind of what you have to use to make sense for why she would go down there without contacting the police but us as the audience shouldn't be asked to like make excuses that's that no, to me that's that... not a good sign of of, of clever writing or good yeah, writing but... like i have to fudge details to be like well you know maybe she no we all know you're terrified you're in a situation like that she has a working cell phone horror movies have to address the cell phone issue all the time this film doesn't even bother with it it's like no she has a working cell phone yeah, I think that the the plan She's just not going to use it. Probably BS. Also because, you know, the audience is supposed to be kind of shocked by discovering this long dark hallway into like nothingness, you know, like the additional hallway. So I do think that it was supposed to kind of be that um, you know, you're looking over here while this is going on kind of a thing. So moving on from that is the police. The police in this movie are so unbelievable to me. Let's say they think she's a crackhead. Let's say they're in a scuzzy neighborhood. This is the one house that's left. It looks like it's an upkept house. Why that house is upkept, and I guess he owns it and rents it out. And as I was saying to her, I had so many questions about how that place got double booked. And when I found out they weren't even in on it, I guess he has, like, he calls those people and they're incompetent. But it just so happens that they get booked there at night. The girl sneaking around in the freaking house at night while they're both sleeping doesn't attack them then. Waits for them to find her private room so that she can come down there. But the homeless guy is like afraid of him. How does the homeless guy even know about him? Like, know about how does he know about these people living in the basement and no I mean, one else knows about? It's possible that he's like just seen them and been in the neighborhood. But he knows their enough. whole history. But also with the booking, he knows thing. their whole history. He yeah. knows that. He was kidnapping women, Mm -hmm. taking them down there, inbreeding with them, and inbreeding with the kids that he was having with them. How the hell would he have that much information on them? How could he possibly have that kind of information? If he's in the area, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how that information would get out unless there was somebody that had escaped. I mean, it seems like there's been other people that he's helped. So other people escaped, but that house has still not been raided by the cops. I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I think that it's hard to kind of brush the cops off. My explanation, which you kind of mentioned and they say, is that they think she's a crackhead. They don't believe her. She's coming out of this really sketchy neighborhood. Sure. She's a woman of color. So I think it is supposed to be this kind of like, you know, she's not getting her point across to them and they're just, you know, uh, unbelieving of her. Um, but... I do think that they should have checked it out more than what they did. A thousand percent and they would have. Also, with the booking thing, <laughs> yeah, it is possible to double book sure. an Airbnb when people put their rental properties on, on multiple different, different, different sites and mm-hmm. you don't have a property manager who's making sure that when those dates get booked off on one site that the other that one doesn't. That is a super small thing I could care less about. They got double booked. Fine. I was just a question. That's all. Like, oh, how'd that happen? It's it's just the convenience of a film. Totally fine. I don't care about that scene. Mm-hmm. It was more of just a, a random question. Quick. Don't care. Like, they got double booked. I'm fine with that. Moving on from that. So, that being said. But, but the fact that it's like this Airbnb that's in the middle of a place that has no other houses. Mm-hmm. This guy owns this house. Is keeping it up. 
and and rent it on an Airbnb, but it's in this horrible neighborhood. And it's like this really nice upkept house with, okay, so as we were saying before, and it's getting back to the cops really quick because I want to finish that off. If they came to the house with her and they saw there was a broken window and a woman who was claiming that she broke out of the basement and was a victim of, of kidnapping, there is zero chance that they're not going to take this seriously. At bare minimum, they're arresting her and taking her in for for freaking breaking and entering. At bare minimum. I mean, But, they... hold on, but, and as I said before too, when I was talking to you about this, so you already heard all this, but let me get this out again. There is clearly evidence. The glass is breaking out. Someone had to break out of the house. These are basic things cops would know. You see the glass is coming out of the house. They look down, they're like, Someone broke out. They didn't break in. Why would this girl break into the house from a different location in the house? Then to break out of the basement. Then to go run and get the cops. Then to bring them back there and make up a story. Why would she do that? She would have no reason to do such a thing. Mm -hmm. She's going to break in in the back door. Then she's going to go and down into the basement, break out through the window, even though she has an, a place that she already came in through. Mm -hmm. Then she's going to run and grab the cops and say, I was kidnapped. I've been down in the basement in this place and take them into the house. For what? Mm -hmm. There's literally no reason why she would do it. And for them to be like, mm, no, you look like you're on drugs. I mean, they they clearly act it's, like she's wasting their time, and they get a call about shots being fired somewhere. So it's you know, that's this is one of those scenes that I think if you go too in depth into it uh, logically, like it does just ruin you know a good part of the film because you get hung up on it. I don't but, know how you could. I yeah. genuinely don't know how you could. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything I just said. I'd love to see someone in the comments try to refute what I just said. Yeah. There's no way. So that's the kind of stuff where it's like, I was telling you, like, you have the scene where she goes down into the basement, six layers removed from her comfortability mm -hmm. to save a guy she doesn't know. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. Takes me out of the movie. Then we have this scene with the cops. Takes me out of the movie. Then we have the scene with the homeless guy who's talking about all this intimate knowledge of how he knows every single detail of what's happening in there. Mm -hmm. But somehow no one else knows about this. The cops don't know about it. This homeless guy knows about this. How? I mean, it's you don't care to elaborate, care to know, to tell us why you know this. I don't, I mean, yeah, there's, I don't know if there's time necessarily for him to, at least the way it's written, but it's like, you know, this is a forgotten neighborhood. Like the only people that live there. Throw a line of people. dialogue in there. Yeah. That. I was once captive in there. Sure. The cops didn't believe me either. Yeah. Then they have a bonding moment. Then it's like, oh, the police in this area just don't listen to people. Mm -hmm. You write yourself out of multiple corners with literally one or two lines of dialogue. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Like, oh, God, this is why I want so bad to be consulted with scripts. Yeah. Because I look at that stuff and I'm like, bro, it literally takes a line or two to fix it. A line or two to fix something. Mm -hmm. Or a line or two retracted sure. right yeah like him having i hate it too i've always hated that know-it-all character that's like explaining it to the audience mm -hmm. right they always like consult with with the with the expert who just so happens to know everything about whatever you have and he just hands, answers the phone and he's like oh, i don't want to talk about this i don't deal with those things anymore and, he, and then they find him and he's like all right here's all the information yeah and then he just has every way to beat the thing and he has all the that kind of stuff, I hate it. I hate it. We don't need to know. We can fill in those blanks for ourselves. We can see that this guy, we get a whole break, we get a whole freaking back scene with Richard Brake. He's following a girl home. He comes into her house. He unlocks her window. We see there's a sex dungeon where he's filming. Freaking AJ, Justin Long's character, puts a video on. He's raping girls. This thing is inbred out of hell. I got it. Yeah. I don't need the homeless guy to explain to me. That that thing is a product of inbreeding. Clearly that's what it is. The, the fact that that homeless guy has to say it just shows you the lack of respect of the audience. 
Like, we're aware that this is an inbred monster. Mm -hmm. We already got that. You've already illustrated that ten times over. But then you have to then write yourself into a corner by giving this character a bunch of information that he shouldn't know. Mm -hmm. And if he does know it, explain to us how the fuck he knows it. Right? So these are the things that I sit back and I'm just like, come on, man. So that's this is what I'm saying. I I like the film. I think that there's I think that there's cool moments. I think that it's really well shot. I think some of the build up is good. I hate that there's stingers on the fake out jump scares. I'm not okay with that. You said it was because they're trying to trick the audience into thinking that uh, Bill Skarsgård's character is a threat. Fine, I'll take that. I'll excuse that. I'm fine with that. There's at least an excuse that you've given. I'll take it. The cop thing, you're not going to get me over it. The her going down there without calling anybody, you're not going to get me over it. The homeless guy knowing things he shouldn't know, you're not going to get me over it. Mm -hmm. Like, those are those things that I'm just like, I'm sorry, no. I'm not going to get anything in the comments that's going to make me go, oh, yeah, okay. It's not happening. (laughs) Yeah. So to me, that's just, that's silly stuff. And then there's unintentional funny moments, which we talked about. Which I actually is, didn't find the unintentionally funny moments funny at all, which is funny <laughs> in itself. But sure. I wasn't like... Her diving off the water tower after her, just the shot, just the way it looked when she dove. It looked hilarious to me. It just... I mean, I see The whole mean. theater laughed. I know. I know. And I understand that it like... But I just wasn't thinking of it. Like, I talked to you about the mother character. I think that she's like really tragic, tragic. and like weirdly sympathetic so I just felt bad that she was jumping over there and I think that you know the fact that she is this giant like naked disfigured woman I think that people I mean you mentioned it like obviously there's a the breastfeeding scene with um AJ people were kind of giggling in the theater about that and I do think that That's stems from them being uncomfortable yeah. but I think that the similarity like the humor that they find, and I mean, you said that it's the way that it's shot, but I think that it is like seeing the body like that fully, just like displayed, was, you know, kind of an uncomfortable moment for people in some ways. Um, because it's, you know, in horror movies, a lot of times you see like uh, very sexualized versions of women's bodies, like they're in the nude in some kind of promiscuous or vulnerable way that's meant to be. Um, appealing and with this movie you have a female who is the opposite of that and I like seeing those representations I like seeing like a mother figure that is you know has no other understanding of how to exist and is so inbred like past any kind of uh, reason that she's you know harming people but she really is just trying to be a mom because that's all she thinks that she can do. Yeah. So I just, I think that that's, it's cool to have a twist on, you know, the mother. And this has been done before, obviously, Psycho, you know, and other movies have made the mom a scary figure rather than, like, a comforting one. But I mm-hmm. liked the way that this film did that because I think it was really visceral with the imagery itself. And, like, especially with AJ, who we find out is a rapist like you start off as I was telling you in the car kind of thinking oh maybe this girl is lying and you know he is a good guy and is just getting screwed over you know it's the film industry but then you find out of course that he had to convince her to have sex with him so he pushed it so I really like that he gets raped (laughs) in a way because it's you know he gets forced into this situation and um, you know made to drink her breast milk right out of her out of her boob (laughs) and it's obviously disgusting to him which is how i think a lot of women feel when you know when guys are coming on to you that you have no interest in and no attraction to it's that same level of disgust that you feel and that his character feels in that moment towards the mother Mm -hmm. um so yeah i don't know the funny moments like to me i just i didn't get it but i understand why people thought it was funny And I think that it's a shame that they were unintentionally funny because I don't think they were meant to be at all. I think they were supposed to be pretty uh, impactful moments. Sure, and I'm fine with that. I'm just telling you they are unintentionally funny. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't really see it as a knock. I'm just telling you that there's going to be a lot of people who just laugh at that outright. Yeah, I agree. So, moving on from that, multiple other questions that I have zero answer to. 
uh, ones I already addressed with you in the car. Uh, one I did, one I didn't. Number one, which is this house, which would have been repossessed by the bank eventually because this dude was living there until they decided to go down into these tunnels and caves that I, I guess he dug. I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. they were just part of the house. Uh, the homeowner doesn't know anything about them, so they weren't on the original blueprints. So I'm assuming he dug them out. Um, okay, fine. Um, so once the house was like repossessed and this house had to then be sold on the market to then be fixed up because they did a lot of renovations. Once that guy was out, this place looks really nice when she walks in. Everything's been taken care of, but no one ever noticed the rope that's hanging out of the wall in the basement to reveal a secret door. No one ever noticed that. The appraisers, nobody who was researching this house in order to put it on the market to see if there's mold or if there's anything. When they were looking through that place, that inspector did a horrible job. I mean, you yeah, didn't it's... see a freaking rope sticking out of the wall that you gently pull and then a door opens up. It depends. No I one mean, ever found all, that? If all that stuff was in the or maybe basement, they just ignored it. I think that it just got overlooked. I think that everything that's in there might just be leftovers. And yeah, I think that the reason that she finds it, even though it seems like she's finding it easily, is because she's locked in the basement. So she's looking specifically for things that are out of place or that could help her escape. You know, most people, if they're walking down there, like if an appraiser's going down there, I don't know. I don't know, though. I mean, like, you're right. They probably, they should have caught that. But I, as far as this movie goes, I think that it was just overlooked. And I think that AJ's character owns this property and probably has been there maybe one time, if any. Sure. If at all. Because sure. he's clearly, it's just a way for him to make passive income. Sure. So, yeah. There's no way he would have seen anything like that. That's fairly nitpicky. I just find that there's, I, I just don't see how anyone didn't find that at any time. I, I just find that to be unbelievable. But mm -hmm. it's not one where I'm like hung up on it. Like, oh, come on. I just find it to be like convenient. Um, I'm assuming that the chick down in the basement doesn't mess with anybody unless they come down into her domain. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really make any sense to me because I also had a problem when you were saying that, like we were talking about this, when Bill Skarsgård's character goes down mm. and he's like, she's waiting upstairs. He knows that she's scared. He gives, gives her a 30 second window. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Just give me a minute. He goes down to the basement. Then he finds a secret room. So one of two things happened. She either came up and took him. And then he got away and then she came and killed him again. Or not killed him again, but grabbed him again and this time killed him. Or he wandered down into that basement alone without letting her know. Both of those are completely ridiculous to me. But the one that's more ridiculous to me is that he wandered off into this extra room down into a basement without letting her know. He wouldn't yell up like, hey, I found another room. I'm going to check it out. Or like, she'd be like, absolutely not. We're leaving. Mm -hmm. But it's like conveniences for like, they don't want to have to address it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, where'd he go? And she has to go investigate. There's just no way. There's no way that he tells her he's going to go down there and he's an actual stand up guy and that he's not going to yell up to her and she's not going to think he's just trying to lure me down there. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't he tell me he was going down there? Now he's screaming for me to come down there, help being, you know, uh, uh, helpless. And I have to go down there into the dark by myself when I already told him I wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to even let me know that you're going to go even further down into this other secret passage. There's no way. Yeah. Right. And I'm assuming she comes out in the night to scavenge food. So the way they're living sure. down there is is she goes out and she gets food. So that's fine. I've mm -hmm. already explained that one in my head. The homeless guy says she comes out at night. She comes out at night. She grabs animals, whatever. They brings them back there and they both eat them together. Fine. Mm -hmm. So I'll explain that. That That's fine. That was my second question, but I already explained it while I was talking about it. But him going down there without letting her know, her coming down there without contacting the police or anything, and her going down there at all is, a, is absurd to me. So... You guys understand my problems if you've seen it. Even if you didn't have those problems before, you can understand why I think those are ridiculous moments. Yeah. 
But, yeah, I don't know. The, it's, it's, it's good. It's an enjoyable film. It just has a lot of insanely questionable moments to me that you have to just ignore outright to enjoy the movie. Mm. And that's that. Anything more you would like to add, spoiler-wise? You want to talk about any of the characters or any of the moments that you found cool? Uh, no, I mean, I think that there's a lot of the point-of-view shots I really liked. I was really into those, and I like uh, the tracking shot behind, um, what's his name's head? The, the guy from the 50s, her dad. Oh, sure, Richard Brake's Richard character. Richard Brake, I really liked the shot of him, like, just mm -hmm. the whole uh, scenes with him I thought were really cool. And, yeah, I don't know. I just uh, thought she was a really tragic character as far as, like, the mother goes. And yeah, she is. I liked that. But I think you should watch it and make your own decision on what you like and dislike. And Absolutely. like you were saying, I think it'll be very divisive for a lot of people. But um, it's good to have films like that to get people talking and, you know, to find out what everybody likes and doesn't like, I guess, as, as far as cinema goes. If only people could be like civil and rational sure. about their disagreements these days. Yeah. I think it, it's a good thing, but that's just not how things are anymore. Go to like any movie on IMDb and it's either rated a one or a 10. Mm -hmm. Everyone's an extremist these days. And if you disagree with anybody on anything, you're an idiot. It's, it's yeah. super annoying. So, uh, that's why I only talk film with you and some people on Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because most people piss me off when it comes to film. Um, and I, I, I'm fine with you thinking that everything I said is like, you know, you're like, oh, I don't disagree. You know, I didn't I see a problem with any That's of that thing, stuff. Though, I'm fine with that. I don't, I don't disagree care. with it. I just more, I, I don't even think it's nitpicky. I just think that it is like, I, I think it's because I enjoyed the film. It feels like I enjoyed it more than you did. So I feel like it's easier for me to overlook those things. And... I know that when, like with you and there's other people, of course, that get really analytical. And it's not that I dislike being analytical with film either. I just think that it takes the right type of film. Like, you know those films that have all the details figured out. Everything ties back together and makes sense. I mean, like, you know, you showed me Heat the other night. And, like, that, that kind of a movie where just everything comes back into play. And I don't think that's the case with this movie. But I'm not really watching this movie for that same um, style. Um, as much as I would have liked it to have been that, I think that it's more about the atmosphere, the cinematography, and then what it has to say about, like, really women, honestly. I think that there's a lot of female, you know, not empowerment necessarily, but yes. But just there's a lot of um, discussion or symbolism, commentary. if you want commentary on what it's like to be a woman in the world. So I like all of that from the film. But I do understand and think that you make really good points about why things don't work and don't make sense and take you out of it. But like, okay. So, so spoilers for Heat really quick. If you haven't seen Heat, what are you doing with your life? It's amazing. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. When characters make bad decisions in that movie, they're completely believable to the characters mm -hmm. right neil has a choice he gets away scot-free or he goes after wayne Grow. and it's like his character has been set up this whole time that he's very prideful mm -hmm. about what he says and what he means mm -hmm. and he can't let it go he just can't let it go but that's earned through the whole film you have a three-hour film that, like, two and a half hours of it builds up Neil's character as somebody who can't let shit go. He's never going to let these guys go. Well, and that's part of it, too, right? Is the length of the film that you have with that character to build them and to show the audience and put them in different situations and around different people. And sure. with this film, you know, it's an hour and, like, 40 minutes or so. Which is in the super short film. But you can do but, it. That, that, that's you know, not. I'm, I, I get I'm what you're saying. I'm just saying that I, what you're I saying. do think that there's a, a, a bit of a, an advantage when you have a longer film. Sure. Of mm -hmm. course. But when Neil makes a bad choice, the choice should have been to go with his girl. He's good. He's scot-free. 
Maybe come back for the guy at a later date. Yeah. Just let it go for now. It's time to walk away. Well, and, and he just can't. Yeah. And that's not that's not that's not a flaw in the movie. That's a flaw in his character. Sure. Right. To me, what I said with this, it's a flaw in the film for me, mm-hmm. because we didn't set those scenes up to to be satisfying for me to be like, oh man, why'd you do that? Yeah. Why'd you do that, man? Right. I totally get why Neil does what he does. I don't know why this girl does what she does. Right? Yeah. See what I'm saying? So that's it. But I think Heat's one of the ten greatest movies ever made. <laughs> so it's hard to compare it to anything. Um, yeah. Let us know if you watch it. Uh, hopefully you're here still. You watched it. Um, but it's in theaters. Yep. In theaters. Let us know. Bye. Bye.